Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Abby and I am a specialist in the United States Army. And if you want to know what I do in the Army, well I just so happen to have a couple videos and I'll have a couple videos coming out, kind of letting you know what my day to day has been like during a global pandemic. But today is the start of a little series that I'm gonna do on my channel and I'm gonna talk about my entire basic training and AIT experience. And I have a lot to say. So I knew when I went to basic training that I would wanna make videos like this because before I shipped, I watched every video. Of course the air would turn on right now. One second, okay. Before I left for basic training, I watched every video that I could find on the internet about reception, about red face, white face, blue face, everything to expect before I left because that's the kind of person that I am. I'm interested in helping you. And some people have asked me about these kinds of videos, so I thought while I'm kind of in the groove and I have some time to sit down and make them, that I would start by telling you about my reception experience. So let me first say that um, thank you to my fiance Dave for saving all of my letters. Um, I did write to him in like my first one and I was like, can you please save these so that I can remember because I have a bad memory sometimes. You do have your phone through most of reception. So a lot of the details of like my day to day from reception, I didn't write down because I was able to just tell him over the phone. Um, I have a little bit written in here. This was like my letter from reception. But these are all of the letters that I wrote to him um, throughout basic training. And then these are all the ones he wrote to me. He wrote to me every single day. But um, this kind of helped me recall what happened in reception. So I have this and then I also just like made a little outline so I can kind of go through and tell you guys all about reception from when I arrived at the hotel in Cleveland to getting to 120th in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, so I'm active duty. Um, so your like shipping out experience will be a little bit different if you're active duty or if you're in the National Guard. Um, and I would assume the reserves. So for me, I had to stay in the hotel the night before I shipped out. So Dave dropped me off at the hotel in Cleveland. I just worked it out with my recruiter that I could get like a late drop off so that I wouldn't have to leave Dave super early and like just be sitting in this hotel in Cleveland alone all day. So Dave dropped me off around like 8 p.m. and I checked in and everything was good. If you check in a little bit earlier, you could have gotten dinner and stuff at the hotel, just like when you go to MEPS for your physical. Um, but since I checked in late, I just ate before and whatnot with Dave. So then the next morning, um, we got to MEPS at 5.45. Actually, I have a little video from the airport, so I'm gonna just roll that clip right here. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I don't know if you can hear me because it's a little bit loud in here. I'm currently at the Cleveland airport. Today we got to the MEPS at around 5.45. Our bus was actually a little bit late this morning. And then as a shipper, you have to do another year analysis, do um, just a small set of mobility tests, and then you just have to like answer some questions with the doctor. That's all you do in the medical wing. And then you have to go out and talk to your liaison from whatever branch you're in and then you have to talk to uh, like a counselor and go over your contract and all the details about your um, dependents like who your money will go to if anything should happen to you and stuff like that and oh, it just took a long time and then we enlisted or we swore in again we left um, the maps at around 12 15 and it's like 12 45 now um oh yeah before we left we got like a travel briefing which included a packet of information and our flight itineraries and stuff and then you have to bring that to the airport and check in with your airline and that's how you get your boarding passes so that's all i've done thus far i don't leave until 4 55 is my first flight to atlanta and then I have about an hour layover, and then I go from Atlanta to Columbia. So that's that's how it's it's gone down this morning. Um, my roommate kind of like made 
another friend, or I don't know if they knew each other from school or whatever, but uh, pretty much everyone here is uh, like 18. Uh, there are so many Marines shipping out today, and then there are like five of us going to Fort Jackson, and then there's one army, there's one going to Fort Sill and one going to Fort Leonard Wood. They all went down to the USO, and I was like, I'm gonna just use this downtime because I'm not gonna be by myself for the next two and a half months. And, um, you know, just chill, maybe watch some YouTube, definitely call my boyfriend. And yeah, that's all I got for now. So that was the last clip I had from prior to basic training. Um, so I think I pretty much explained everything in there that happens at MAPS, super chill for the most part. They understand that, like, you're actually doing the thing that day, you're shipping out, so I feel like they were a little bit nicer to us that day than on the physical day. So like I said, we got our uh, travel brief, we got our meal ticket thing, and so I did have a layover, so I flew from Cleveland to Atlanta. At Atlanta, I used my meal ticket there. I know a lot of people use their meal ticket actually in Cleveland before the first flight and I was just worried about like being hungry because I knew that going into reception everyone says that you're gonna be up for a long time which I was so I had to like make a mad dash at the Atlanta airport for some chick-fil-a you can only use your travel voucher in one place so get as much food as you want with that 20 bucks or whatever they give you okay so from Atlanta to Columbia pretty much our whole flight was full of people going to Fort Jackson so I don't know how many hundreds of people but we got off of our flight in Columbia and I stopped at the bathroom first before going to the main area which was such a, a good idea but then when I finally got to like the main area there was already a huge formation of people and basically we ended up standing in this formation at parade rest for like two hours we got to the airport at like close to 10 o'clock at night so everything was closed like all the shops and restaurants and everything so we're just in this big open area of the airport and since I stopped the, at the restroom I was in the like second half of the formations that were there so I don't know if the formation that was like farther ahead of us if they came in on an earlier flight if those were all people from my flight not sure but there was like a big group in front of us and then there was my group back here. And so there was like one drill sergeant up with the group in front of us and you could hear him yelling all of the instructions and stuff at them. And then there was two civilians with us and they were nice and they were just like, just be quiet, stand at parade rest. Like, I think they told us to take off watches and um, if we had like an outer layer on, like a jacket or anything, to take that off and put it in our bags. Um, so yeah, just listen to the instructions that are given to you. And then once the group that was in front of us, they were like marched off in a single file lines, like they filed out. Um, and then they went to the buses and they left and they must have went to Fort Jackson before us. And then it was like our group's turn to interact with that drill sergeant. So he like moved us forward and um like girls if you didn't have your hair in a bun already like he made you do that which like i put i had my hair down traveling because it's more comfortable obviously like if you're gonna sleep or whatnot but i just put my hair in a bun um before i got off the plane so that's a good tip yeah and i think this is the point where this drill sergeant that we interacted with at the airport we never saw him ever again so i really don't know if he just worked with a different company once we got to 120th or literally his only job was to like frighten us at the airport it's basically like your typical security shakedown like i said watches and stuff like that and then um he asked about weapons and bringing any type of that forward um and then he grouped like females together and yeah they they like provided snacks so he gave us like five ten minutes to eat some snacks if we wanted to get rid of your trash um there was like water there and stuff um and then after like two hours in the airport we it was finally our turn to like file out and go on buses and the airport is like 20 30 minutes from 120th reception which i remember plugging that into my phone like google maps um 
getting on the bus. So I was like, cool, I have 20 minutes, I can take a power nap because again, I've watched every video, so I know that I'm going to be up for a long time. And I'm sitting next to this girl who, like bless her heart, she's probably 17 or 18, right out of high school. And I like put my head down. There are no drill sergeants or anything on the bus with you. It's just civilians driving the bus. So I was like gonna take this 20 minute power nap and I like put my head down and started to sleep. And she like shakes me to wake me up and she shoves a bottle of hand sanitizer under my nose and she goes, here, sniff this to stay awake. I'm like, excuse me, please get away from me. First of all, what the heck? I don't know you, please, I know you're trying to help, but just no. Second, we're not gonna sleep for a long time. There's no penalty for me sleeping on the bus right now, so can you just not? So, sleep when you can. Just be smart. Like, I wasn't about to just, like, let a drill sergeant come up on the bus and find me sleeping, obviously. So anyway, that's, like, all the nonsense of airport and what whatnot. And then we roll up to 120th, and you see those classic lines with the footprints outside of the entrance and you know what's coming. I'm sure if you've researched anything about going to Fort Jackson you've seen those iconic videos of the people getting smoked and do this or do that and da da da. That exact situation will happen to you. So just know that once you get off of that bus you're gonna do some push-ups, you're gonna be in the front leaning rest, just follow directions. <laughs> And the typical thing that will happen, even if no one does this, I'm sure they'll pull the line anyway of like, they'll have you down in the front leading rest, and then they'll tell you to go, go to attention, and someone will come to attention and like brush their hands off on their pants. And they'll be like, did I tell you to do that? No, I told you to stand up. And then you'll go back down. And so that'll happen for like, I don't know, a good 15 minutes. It's not that long. Um, and then they'll rush you off to a room where you're gonna go quickly through a bunch of paperwork. They're like trying to scare you. So I'm just so sorry about how much I say like in this video. Please forgive me. So just know that even if you make a little mistake, that's a very human thing to do. Like they might call you out for it or whatever, but it, there's nothing wrong with you. Like you're not gonna be terrible at all of basic training. Like this is just what they're trained to do. To, to make you feel small. So um, if you can't keep up with like paperwork and stuff like that, just do your best and hopefully a battle buddy next to you will help you out. Uh, but I remember you have to get this, this, and this form out and they'll tell you everything and then someone will come around to check. And I remember we had like three forms and the drill sergeant would take one of them and then you had to take the other two. And so she would take the one and then you had to be really quick about taking the other two forms to put away. And if you weren't quick enough, she would just push them off the table. <laughs> it's like, okay, that was necessary. The night that you get there, though, that's probably the worst, the worst, like, treatment of actually being at reception. Once you get through those first couple hours, then the reception drill sergeants are actually pretty chill. In this room, um, when you're like going over your paperwork and stuff, which you'll have this packet that you'll have brought with you from your MEPS. Um, so this is where you also get assigned your roster number. So they don't call you by name in reception, so you just need to know your roster number, remember it, and then remember to respond to it. From this room, I'm pretty certain we went to just an adjoining room which was like completely open it had kind of like a padded floor you know like squares like the foam squares that like toddlers play on um that's kind of what the floor was made of so they would tell you to like get in a square and so you stand in it and then this is where like the shakedown will happen which again you can find videos of this on youtube just search fort jackson reception shakedown and um, they'll just go through your whole civilian bag with you and then tell you like, if you have this, bring it up, you're not allowed to have it, da 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 da. Lots of people asking dumb questions about, can I have this, can I have that? Or like, they'll just come up to the drill sergeant 
and like present them with something and then they'll be like what the get away from me so maybe just don't be that person do your research on what you're actually allowed to have and what you're not after the shakedown we moved directly over to a separate building where we were given like some equipment and also our PT uniforms and then I think that's also like where we got tan t-shirts and socks and stuff. So basically everything but your actual ACUs and your boots. Civilian stuff with you so just know you're carrying that the whole time. You'll go and you'll get a duffel bag and you'll basically just go down the line from person to person. Um, sometimes they will have like holdover soldiers working there and so it will be like other soldiers who haven't left reception yet giving you like your packs of t-shirts and stuff like that it's a very mechanical system you just go a lot of times you have to tell them how tall you are how much you weigh and then they'll pick what size you get like I have all mediums and then I think my shorts are like medium large and like everything from that they gave me from reception is too big like um, once I got out of AIT I bought small shirts and after basic training I bought small PTs so just know your stuff's probably not going to fit, but you gotta do what you gotta do and just keep the line moving. You now have your civilian stuff that you brought with you. Hopefully it's a book bag if you're smart. And you have a duffel bag and you have a laundry bag. So you have those three bags full of things and they're all your stuff and you're responsible for keeping track of them. So. You're gonna be carrying them around for the foreseeable future. They grouped you by height and weight. So I was like in the in the very end of like the first group of the smallest people. So I remember coming out with my stuff and being like the last one and a group of people, they had like collected enough females that they felt like they could take a group away from that building. So I remember like running to catch up with them and a drill sergeant was like, you better go! So. I caught up with them, luckily, so I didn't have to like stay there and be the first one of the next group and wait for like another 20 females to join me before I could go anywhere. Uh, it didn't really matter though because the group of us just marched our happy little butts to the chapel and that is where we sat for the next three hours. So we have all of our stuff around us and we're sitting in pews, we're supposed to just face forward and we probably sat there for a good hour before a drill sergeant came in and told us that we needed to go in groups to the restroom to change into summer PTs. And oh yeah, if I didn't mention by this point, you have to have a battle buddy at all times in reception. So that's fun also, like you don't know anyone and now you... I mean, it was okay because you had to go in groups, but you do need to be with someone at all times. We like all gradually get changed and some girls were like putting their head downs, heads down in their stuff, going to sleep and whatnot, but like a lot of us were afraid that a drill sergeant would come in and we were sleeping. So, uh, I don't know if I dozed off or not, but it was definitely not, not, not a night of rest that first night. So it's now Tuesday, technically, it's been Tuesday, and it's probably like four in the morning. Slowly throughout the night, the chapel had started to fill up, so like the females were on one side and the rest were males, and then we pretty much stayed in there until we went to breakfast. So we took all of our stuff um, across the walkway thing to the chow hall, and we stood, we stood in there silently crammed together with all of our stuff um, and had breakfast. We knew that that meant that there was there was no sleep that night so Tuesday started and honestly the next couple days like they all blur together. So I'm just gonna tell you kind of the things that you'll cover in these next couple days. I know that the most like ridiculous and cruel part your first full day at reception um, is where you do like some pretty important things like finance, um, the GI Bill, and your life insurance. So a civilian will be up in front of you kind of um, giving you a brief on all of these things and trying to tell you about your options. Meanwhile, you're just sitting there like trying not 
to fall over out of your chair. And trust me, some people did. And um, if you're falling asleep, this is a thing throughout like your whole time at basic training, they will make you stand up. Um, you can also have some integrity and if you're falling asleep, go stand up yourself, that's fine. But it's really hard to like focus on these very boring things that people are saying that don't apply to you right now, but will in the future. And then, you know, you have to go like check certain boxes and talk to people one-on-one -on -one and sign a lot of things. And so that all happens in your first day. Uh, I'm pretty sure we got our cat cards the first day. Well, I mean, we took pictures for them. I probably took up the first day. I don't think we did any medical stuff. The second day was a lot of uniform stuff. So we actually went and tried on certain sizes for our ACUs. And again, like the women there will just try and pull the seniority card of I've been doing this forever. Please don't tell me how to do my job. Everyone, literally everyone ends up with a uniform that is way too big for them. In my AIT class, I don't think I talked to a single girl who said like, yeah, my basic training uniform still fit me great. I ended up having to like fold my pants over and then belch them um, the entire way through basic training. We also got fitted for boots that day and I thank the Lord every day that I did not have a problem with boots because some girls really, 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 really suffered when it came to blisters on their heels or on the sides of their foot or like the tops because sometimes the boots are too small and so they rub like the thickness of someone's foot so you can like take out an insert for that. Um, but I was really, really lucky that my boots just fit perfectly. I think my boots were a little bit big, which people say you don't want that, but I, I, I didn't have any problems. And mine were just like, just a smidge bigger. But take that as you will and you know your feet. From what I can remember, day two was a pretty big waste. Um, in true army fashion, it was a lot of hurry up and wait and sitting around and um, trying to meet time hacks, but then no one else is on time, so you end up just sitting there anyway. I should have known that this was going to be an issue from the beginning, but we were wearing summer PTs almost all week until um, I remember I wrote to Dave in a letter about the first time that we actually put our uniforms on and that that was really cool. Um, but we were in summer PTs for a lot of the week and so a lot of times when we, we would be waiting for breakfast chow in the mornings it would be so cold um, but we didn't have a choice we had like had to wear the the required uniform so we would be wearing summer PTs I remember when we had all, all of our stuff that first morning that girls were like putting their arms in their laundry bags because it was just so cold out there so yeah just a warning if you're going to Columbia in October like I did the weather was a challenge. Just to recap, I shipped out like from Cleveland Airport on Monday and then I got to Columbia Monday night. Um, all of Tuesday went by. Finally, Tuesday night, we got to go to our base and we actually got to sleep. So from the time I shipped out from Cleveland to the time I got to go to sleep was 42 hours awake. So just be mentally prepared that that's probably going to happen to you. I have heard that some people get to go to 120th and they get to go right to a bay and then they start at a reasonable time. But that did not happen for me and I've heard that that has not happened for a lot of other people. So just know that it's a possibility. And then like I said, day two was uh, uniform and stuff like that. And then I think we also went to the shop at, I have an entire list of all of the stuff that they make you buy at the shop at. So they'll give you um, this thing called an Eagle Cash Card, which is basically a little gift card that you can use on post and it's preloaded with $350 of your money. So you can use it however you like, except when you're in reception and they take you to the shop at and they make you buy all of these things because for some reason you don't get a choice in it, even though it's your money, but I heard one of the drill sergeants say that like they're required to make sure you have these things so that when you go to basic training 
you can't say that like, oh, I didn't get that at reception or I didn't get an opportunity for it, which is dumb, but whatever. I was actually like picked out of our group to be one of the people helping people get through the shop that quickly. So I had to like take toothpaste off a shelf and put it in people's basket. Really exciting stuff. So they make you buy shower shoes, black socks for PT, um, a bar of soap, toothpaste, shampoo, face wash, which I wrote on here that I did not pick up because I had my own face wash, face wash, um, a hygiene kit, which at first I thought they were just making me buy this ugly bag to put all of the other things in, but the hygiene kit, the hygiene kit actually has Q-tips, um, field wipes, which are just like baby wipes, a toothbrush, a toothbrush container, nail clippers, hand sanitizer, bug spray lotion, um, two locks, uh, that's all that comes in the hygiene kit, so it, they make you get this ugly brown bag, but it has all of that good useful stuff in it. Um, and then they make you buy the white packs of Fruit of the Loom underwear, which are just terrible. And there are also sports bras, and you have to get at least three of them. So, let me tell you, I, I'll save I'll save my underwear talk for red face video. That's what they make you get and I think I'll do actually a whole video on what I took to basic training. I made a video um, literally the night before I shipped and I'll um, link that somewhere or maybe down below. I don't have a computer right now so I can't do all the fun um, like clicky things on my iPad so. But I'll link it in the description below so you can watch that. But um, I definitely have some tips on what to pack. So we went to the shop head, got all that stuff. More stuff to carry, cool. Also took our basic training pictures, which are terrible. And at this point you'll have your um, like name tapes and everything, you get that when you get your uniforms. Um, and you'll have like your ranks and everything, which I don't know if this is a thing everywhere, but at least in my company, we didn't wear our rank for basic training, which I've heard that that's weird, but I don't think anyone in our battalion wore their rank. But for your basic training picture, you can wear your rank. And I forgot mine for my hat. So I was like, eh, I guess I'm taking this picture as a fuzzy. So that's what I did. I could have borrowed someone's rank, but I really didn't want the picture anyway because you look terrible and I'd rather just take pictures like when I get out of there. So I know that's like a controversial thing. Lots of people are like, you have to buy your basic training picture. But at that point, you haven't even done anything. Like you're just at reception. So I decided I was not buying that early on. Um, they'll also give you an opportunity to order your basic training video. I was so disappointed with the photography and video that happened um, with our battalion. So once I found out what the page was called, my family was keeping up with it, obviously. And I remember one time Dave just writing me and being like, well, Bravo Company uploaded 174 pictures today and you weren't in a single one. I have like minimal proof that I did cool things in basic training and there's no way that I'm on the video that I have at home that I got over Christmas and I still haven't watched it. So I would say skip that and save $40 because you you can just tell people about your stories like I am instead of hoping that you're maybe on this video. And then on, I'm, we're, we're gonna say this is day three also, is when you have your moment of truth. And that's just basically when the drill sergeants are like, look, if there's anyone here who maybe lied about something, maybe, maybe you don't think you're cut out for this. It's okay, you can come up and tell us. And let's just say we did not see any of those people at basic training. So maybe don't fall for that. Maybe if you're actually having doubts about joining the army, then maybe don't or wait or talk it out with somebody because they're, we're the 1% for a reason and there's no point in putting yourself through any of what I've just discussed and dealing with like an anything but honorable discharge for any reason. I don't know what day I'm on now because honestly it doesn't super matter because basically you could go to 
um, 120th reception and have an entirely different schedule than I did. It all depends on which platoons can get slotted into which times with each stations. Basically you just have a checklist of things you need to get done that week and um, you could have gone to medical on the first day whereas I went to medical on the fourth day. Um, and I saw that happen within like my company so um, when you get there that first night, I should have said this, when you get there that first night and you get your number and whatnot, you get sorted into a platoon. A platoon is just a group of people so I think there was like uh, four, 40 of us in our platoon. But like while my platoon was doing one thing, the other platoon could have been doing something else. So it just depends on like when they can fit you in where. So. I can tell you when you go to medical that you're going to give some blood and um, this comes back to like the when you get your immunizations. Um, I've heard people say bring your immunization records to reception so that you can maybe be exempt from some shots but they take your blood and from that is what determines what immunizations you get. So. There's no point in bringing immunization records because they're going to know either way. So when you're at medical, you'll give some blood, you'll do a dental exam, <clears throat> you'll do an eye exam, you'll do the hearing test again, and I think that's it. So once you make it through all those stations, you're pretty much good to go. I had like a little chip in a root canal that I had and so they found that on the x-ray obviously because it's basically one of those things that you walk in and you bite on the thing and then it takes a picture of your cheek. Um, and so I was really worried that that was going to hold me back from shipping because like the smallest thing um, can delay you actually going to basic training because they don't want to send you out there if there's anything wrong with you basically. But um, I guess like it was fine so that didn't delay me or anything but just know if you have anything that you're kind of worried about um, I would just talk to your recruiter first because I didn't even think about that and then came up on the x-ray and then I had to worry about that for the next couple days but that's that. I got my prescription for my glasses which we received our glasses and our eye pro at reception. I know some people didn't get theirs until they were actually at basic training um, so we were lucky to get ours there because I know the people that had to get them at basic, it took them a while. So I remember the day that we were getting our immunizations and everyone hears about the peanut butter shot. And so, um, before any of these things happen to you, like before you go through any of these screenings and whatnot, you'll get a briefing on literally everything that you do in the army. So before we got all of our immunizations, someone, um, got up there and gave us a briefing about like the... Um, immunizations and whatever that we were getting that were mandatory and then about some that will depend on our blood test results. I think there's 12 shots total and you'll get a paper with your information on the top and then it'll have like the shots listed but it doesn't say like which ones you're getting it just says it just has them all listed and then I remember on our papers there was like a letter and a number written on them and then some of them were written in different colors and um, so everyone gets this uh, paper like this info sheet and it mine was like A2 and it was written in blue and so there was like other people that have that similar combination some have like B6 and it's written in black stuff like that and so everyone's like trying to figure out like which letters mean which and the minimum that you can get is three and that's what I ended up getting um, but everyone was saying that like oh that means you're getting them all or this means that whatever blah 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 who actually knows but um, my blood test said that I only needed the minimum ones and that's all I got so that's cool I was the last in the line so probably if your number gets called first I'm sorry but you're getting the most shots <laughs> um, and instead of the peanut butter shot um, they do a pill now and you have your camel back on so you have a water supply to like take it. I was worried about that but I can swallow pills with water. Um, so if you can't do that maybe practice before you go or just be like my AIT roommate and just uh, don't swallow the pill. <laughs> um, but no one ever found out. Sorry. I've outed you. But she's fine now so. So I think that covers 
the biggest things that you have to do at reception. Um, just know this whole time you are not doing PT. Um, you're free to work out in the bays if you want to. Um, I know I just like would do my minimum like push-ups. I try and do leading up to basic training. I was like just do 15 when you wake up and 15 before you go to bed. So that's what I was doing that week and I would do like some sit-ups and stuff. The amount of girls that were in my bay that just like couldn't do a single push-up. I was just like what? What? But yeah, you're not doing group PT, obviously, because you haven't learned any of that. And so um, they're not trying to hurt you or anything before you ship out. Um, you eat three times a day. And the food at reception is actually pretty good. I wrote in, a, in my letters today, I was feeling fluffy by the end of the week because we weren't exercising. We would literally just walk to a location, stand there or sit there for like two hours and then go to chow and then go walk to the next place and sit or stand for two hours. So we were just eating all week long. So remember how I said in the airport that there was a group in front of us and then there was our group. So the group in front of us, they finished all of their stations by, by Thursday. So I think they were done technically Wednesday night. And so they got to ship out two basic training on Thursday. And it just so happened that um, that week, um, was a four-day weekend like the following weekend the drill sergeants were off Friday through Monday so instead of shipping out on Thursday with the previous group my group um, Alpha company had to stay at reception for an extra four days so we were like completely done with with everything that we needed to do at reception but we couldn't ship yet because it was a four-day weekend so we didn't have drill sergeants there to like facilitate shipping us out and then we also wouldn't have had drills at basic to receive us because of that our company was also changed to bravo company which that was something for me basically before you leave reception they'll do a couple last minute checks i remember they did a foot check so um, because so many people have problems with the boots they will have you come down in your shower shoes so that the drill sergeants can inspect your heels and everything like that. They'll also look and see if you have um, toenail polish or anything like that on because that's got to go before you get out of there. Um, and then I believe that same day is also, so this would have been Thursday, um, is also when we were divided up into platoons. So we actually got to know what platoon we were going to in basic so that obviously whenever we got off of the bus we would know what platoon to go to. They'll give you like the correct color and everything to match to your platoon. So I went into fourth platoon, so they gave me yellow tape and these yellow dots to put um, in place of where a, it's this side, right? In place of where um, your unit patch would go. So you're identifiable by that color. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's so much information in this video. So I hope I didn't like skip any big things. Please don't hesitate to ask me questions on any of the stuff if it, if it was confusing. I know that the timeline wasn't super like this, then this, then this will happen. But honest, honestly, like every experience is going to be different. I mean, just based on what I said, like we thought we were going to leave there on a Thursday, but then we ended up staying a long weekend so things change and that's how the army is. So just know that that could happen to you. But this pretty much covers like all of the things that you need to get done at reception before you can ship to basic training. Let me just clarify when I say ship to basic training. 120th reception is just the battalion that takes in all of the people that are trying to go through Fort Jackson basic training and they do all of these steps before they send you from 120th to whatever basic training battalion you're going to. So for me, I shipped to 260th infantry regiment battalion from 120th. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, one last thing I want to throw in about reception is that you will do fire guard when you're at reception and all fire guard is throughout the night. There always has to be a battle buddy team up to just be monitoring what is going on in the bay. Hopefully you'll end up in a full bay where there are more girls so you can like just be on a schedule and have it less. In my bay, there was only 
uh, like 23 of us so we had it more often um, and I ended up being the one to like make a schedule for us so that it wasn't coming back to the same people all the time but all you have to do is make a schedule and usually people do like an hour at a time so you and a battle buddy usually your bunk mate will be up for an hour with your flashlights and stuff and you just have to be uh, making sure that nothing shady is happening at night and then you wake up the next people go back to bed and then they'll wake up the next people and so on so that did happen for us at, at a reception okay i think that covers pretty much everything again please let me know what questions you have down below um, let me know if you would like to see that packing video and just my overall suggestions and tips on what to pack, what kind of bag to bring, what not to bring, etc. Because I think that would be very helpful and I have some opinions. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please check out my other ARMY videos if you uh, want to know more about my process of becoming a 42 Romeo and uh, what that is. Thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe to my channel because we're so close to a thousand subscribers and I'm very excited. So uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe out there and bye guys.